Hello and welcome to the Barbican Centre for tonight's concert. I'm so glad you could join us. I'm Jess Gillam and I'm going to be playing and presenting and we'll also be hearing from some incredible musicians. Katie Mellua, Bob Chilcott, the BBC Singers and the BBC Concert Orchestra. We'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who's made tonight's concert possible. Your support is hugely appreciated and if anybody feels they could make a donation to Barbican, it would also be very much appreciated. Please enjoy tonight's A Choral Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Barbican for the BBC Singers Choral Christmas. Please give a warm welcome to the stage for your host, Jess Gillam. Good evening and welcome to the Barbican in the heart of the City of London for tonight's Christmas celebration. We're thrilled to be joined by a live audience here in the hall, as well as audiences around the world. We have people watching in Japan who are up at five o'clock in the morning to watch this concert, so hello to you, and also people in America and Canada. If you are watching from even further away, please do tweet us at BBC Singers and let us know where you're watching from, and I'll let you all know in the second half. I'm Jess Gillam, and I'm delighted to be here on stage with the BBC Singers this evening. The singers are joined by their friends from the BBC Concert Orchestra, the brilliant Bob Chilcott, and special guest Katie Melua, who will be singing some festive favourites as well as some of her best-loved songs. We thank you for joining us to spend this time with us, and I really hope you enjoy tonight's concert. So to start off the festive celebrations, it's Stuart, Nichols arrange, Stuart Nicholson's arrangement of Ding Dong Merrily on High. Please welcome to the stage the principal guest conductor of the BBC Singers, Bob Chilcott.
What a great way to start our festive celebrations tonight. Stuart Nicholson's Ding Dong Merrily on High with members of the BBC Concert Orchestra, the BBC Singers and their principal guest conductor, Bob Chilcott. Well, we're going to hear some music by Bob himself shortly. I'll be joining the ladies of the BBC Singers and pianist Ashok Gupta to perform Bob's stunning carol, Midnight of Your Birth. We'll follow that with Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence by Ryuchi Sakamoto, the Japanese composer. And this is actually one of my favourite Christmas pieces to play as I have lots of childhood memories with this, with this piece of music. But before we hear those two pieces, we're going to hear a Christmas carol by the Nigerian composer Christian Oneji. This is his lively setting of Amuworo Ai Otu Nwa, words from, the bi words from the biblical book of Isaiah, from unto a child is born. Bob Chilcott conducts the BBC Singers.
Thank you very much. That was Ryuchi Sakamoto's Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Well, we're going to hear a popular carol next for choir, organ and percussion by the Manchester-born composer John Gardner. It's tomorrow but shall be my dancing day. It's probably his most enduringly popular work and I'm actually looking forward to a time where we can all dance tomorrow. And following that, we're going to hear Bob's arrangement of O Little Town of Bethlehem. And Bob, I think that we need some audience participation, is that right? We do, we do. We're not allowed to sing, unfortunately, um, but you can hum. Now, in this particular arrangement, we have uh, the, a new tune written to um, the words of O Little Town Bethlehem, which uh, Jamie, the baritone soloist, will sing in the first verse. And then the second verse comes, we have uh, um, the tune, the new tune combined with the tune that you will know. And um, the, just so that if you, if you need to, a point of reference, Matthew on the trombone here, he is playing the melody. And also the tenors and basses um, in the choir are singing it too. So uh, please feel free to hum safely. <laughs> um, but before that, we'll sing, as Jess said, we'll sing the uh, great piece by John Gardner, Tomorrow Shall Be My Dancing Day.
Scott conducting his carol, All Little Town, here at the Barbican in London with the BBC singers and soloists Jamie W. Hall and Nancy Cole, members of the BBC Concert Orchestra and, of course, COVID-safe humming from our wonderful live audience here at the Hall and maybe you at home too. Well, it's time for the BBC singers to take a small rest and for the brass and percussion of the BBC Concert Orchestra to take over. Along with Rachel Mahon on organ, they're going to play an arrangement of the traditional carol in Dulce Jubilo by Leslie Pearson. Leslie Pearson is a versatile keyboard player as well as a composer and arranger and has played on a variety of film and TV soundtracks through the years, including Doctor Who, Star Wars and Bond films. So let's hear his arrangement of in Dulce Jubilo. Thank you. 
There's really nothing like the sound of brass at Christmas. It actually makes me want to play the trumpet. Um, Bob Chilcott there conducting Rachel Mahon and the brass and percussion of the BBC Concert Orchestra in Leslie Pearson's arrangement of In Dolce Jubilo. Well, next tonight, we have a very special guest joining us here at the Barbican. When she released her first album back in 2003, it sold a staggering 1.8 million copies in the first five months. Her second album went quadruple, and she's followed it with a string of best-selling collaborations and albums, making her one of Britain's most successful recording artists of the millennium. Please give a warm welcome to the stage to Katie Melua. Thank you so much, Katie. It's so nice to have you singing with the choir. Bob, it's such an honor to be here tonight. Oh, thank you. Um, that, of course, that song is so well known um, across the world as Carol of the Bells. But in fact, in the original Ukrainian, it, uh, it is slightly different, isn't it? It is. It's known as Little Swallow. And um, actually, uh, that song and the next one that I'm going to do tonight with you all is... Um, you know, was our first collaboration together. And I'm so happy to be here back with you because the arrangements that you've made to these choral pieces are just so exquisite. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, we're gonna follow with, um, actually, I think it was the first thing we did together, which was a, um, a version of uh, Joni Mitchell's River. And actually, it's been covered by a lot of people at Christmas. It's, it's a completely contrasting song, wonderful song. And, uh, well, I hope you could enjoy it, but uh, it, it's really become your piece, I think, this, Katie. Well, I think uh, it's the sound of, you know, just an acoustic guitar, a single voice, singing those words, Joni Mitchell's words, and then the choir in that majestic soundscape that you've yeah. created. Oh, thank you. So we do it. It's coming on Christmas They're cutting down trees They're putting up reindeer And singing songs of joy and peace 
I wish I had a river I could skate away on But it don't snow here It stays pretty green I'm gonna make a lot of money And then I'm gonna quit this crazy scene No, oh, I wish I had a river I could skate away on I wish I had a river so long I would teach my feet to fly Cutting down trees, they're putting up reindeer and singing songs of joy and Wonderful Katie Mellua with the BBC Singers conducted by Bob Chilcott performing Joni Mitchell's River. Thank you, Katie. Well, it's nearly time for our interval in tonight's concert, but before we take a break, it's time for that festive classic, The Twelve Days of Christmas, in an arrangement by Bob. Bob, I think it draws on quite a lot of different inspirations. Can you tell us a bit about it? Well, yes. Well, when we used to have a um, a, carol co uh, a choir singing competition that was televised on the BBC at the beginning of the new millennium we did and we used to do the final in the Albert Hall and there was always a time when the judges had to go away and the place was full of choir singers and full of visiting and guest artists and um, they needed something to fill up the time while the judges were out so um, I did this arrangement of the 12 Days of Christmas, and there was a, a lovely man who many people in choral music in London will know, Terry Edwards, who was conductor of the Royal Opera House Chorus. And he said, why don't you, because five gold rings is copyright, um, so why don't you write a solo for various different choirs or ensembles or soloists who are in 
uh, the Albert Hall. So we thought that was a good idea. We had a soul singer, we had the opera babes, we had the BBC singers, we had um, the Adventist chorale, the London Adventist chorale, we had a children's choir, we had a variety of choirs. So that's what happened. So um, the piece is a kind of happenstance piece and it's a bit stupid, but we'd like to do it for you now. And uh, we're going to be joined by uh, Ashok and Rachel and various percussion instruments for this one. Well, I think it's more than a time, Philip Bob. But to take us to tonight's interval, Rachel Mahon and Ashok Gupta join the BBC singers in Bob Chilcott's The Twelve Days of Christmas.
That was Bob Chilcott's arrangement of the 12 days of Christmas. Hello, my name is Johnny Manners. I am the producer of the BBC Singers. And whilst our performers on stage take a well-earned rest, uh, I'm delighted to be joined during our rehearsal process by our conductor, Bob Chilcott, by our guest uh, soloist, Katie Melua, and by our presenter and saxophonist, Jess Gillam. Hello. So I thought we'd just start by talking a little bit about music making this Christmas and what it's like to be back in the studio. Bob. Well, it's strange to think that when li normal life, you know, when we're performing, um, it feels absolutely just what you do every day. And then all of a sudden you're faced with this situation where you're not doing it. And then to do it again um, seems like a gift. And to be with people who you know and to see it in the, in, as a live experience, it's just absolutely great. And I, I had a very lovely feeling in the rehearsal we had yesterday at Made of Our Studios when we were rehearsing and Katie and Jess came and, and the, uh, we were just doing it. And I could, you could hear that everyone was loving it because we were doing it. It felt like that, didn't it? It really? was beautiful. Yeah, yeah so I, think, good I think it was so nice to feel that we were actually making something in reality together with other people. I think that's what it's all about. You know? I agree. And Jess, you said as well, that just, just the feeling of collective music making after so long without it just made it all the more special. Yeah, I could hardly play in the rehearsal yesterday. Just hearing, I think also for me anyway, vo the collective nature of voices, human voices together is always just so beautiful. But then when you're, you haven't heard that for so long and then you're in the room, there was such a special feeling about that and just hearing it. And I was just welling up as, as I was playing. But yeah, the unity and the joy of the collective that is just, is extraordinary. It's a power of music. And Katie, do you think that's more special because we're, we're making Christmas music. Do you think that's the case? Well, I think so. But also, you know, with everything that's happened this year, you know, I often think about our field, you know, creating, um, being artists, being musicians. You know, you don't get into this business expecting a sort of a, an easy ride. It's a creative business. And so with everything that's happened this year, it means we have to be even more creative, you know? And so I think it's kind of appropriate for our, for our sort of imagination to have these completely new challenges. And of course, you know, this time of year is incredibly special. Um, I think it will feel even more special this year. And to be brought together with music is, I'm just very grateful to be doing it with such phenomenal um, colleagues. And there's something you said in rehearsals yesterday which really struck a chord, and that was, this has been a terrible year, of course, for artists everywhere, but you said that positivity is coming from this, and I guess like tonight's concert, it's being streamed, and so there are these elements of positivity that have come from the pandemic. Yeah, I think it seems to be, I mean, it's a, it's a whole new way of um, projecting music out to the world, you know, so this type of concert, um, is going to get viewed by people around the world who might have never seen a concert like this. Bob, you were saying to me you have friends in Japan. Yeah, getting they're up getting up at five in the morning, you know, yeah. to watch it. I, <laughs> I just think that's absolutely great. And, and why wouldn't you? It's a, it's a bunch. Of, it's a quite a relatively large bunch of musicians, mm. actually. And I, I don't think there are many places where that's happening. So I think it's quite, it's a real celebration, actually, because for choirs particularly this time of year is it's a really important time when everyone loves to sing the music that they know and a few new things and that sort of thing um so i think it's it's a it is a celebration and i think you're right i think people will be will be watching from all over the world and that's that's a new kind of access and i wonder whether that might kind of continue actually i think it possibly could also I'm amazed at the camaraderie by people at our, you know, live industry and, you know, those that are used to singing, being on stage or playing music on stage. Everyone knows that the, that whole business has just stopped. So, you know, people are really rooting and, and coming to tune into these streamed shows. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's really good. One thing that's really struck me is the distancing that the audience will have seen on stage today. We're working at 2.5 metres. 
Bob, you've been involved with the BBC Singers since we went back to work after the first lockdown. And how have you seen their approach to music, music making change over those months? Well, um, as anyone knows, most musicians, when they play together, they, they, they're quite close together, and particularly singers. You, you tend to be in a line. So you, one of the things that's really important as, a, as an ensemble or a choir singer is that you, you listen to what's going on around you. It's part of how you create what you do yourself. And um, I think for the singers, for any singer who had to be two, two and a half metres apart from um, another singer who they had to relate to, it was very, very challenging. And I found when I came in, I think it was in September, I came in the first time, it took quite a long time to make the sound. And as things um, moved on, I mean, they, they did it eminently well. But I think, you know, I did ask some singers, how, how does it feel, you know? And they said, oh, it's difficult, which of course it is. And they're professionals, they're extremely good at it. So you think people who are working in schools and working in, you, uh, you know, other amateur singers, who are distancing, it's very challenging because the togetherness is so much of the, the dynamic. But they've really got used to it now. And I think when they're back together close, it'll feel really weird yeah. again. And Jess, what's it like for you as a, an instrumentalist playing with an orchestra? How, how does that affect your performance? I think the breathing is the thing that I miss the most, which is the thing we're meant to not be doing <laughs> on each other <laughs> at all. But they're just the, the physicality of, of breathing with people and again that kind of the collective nature of that and the, the the unison it can bring that was really difficult not to have that but I think what's been interesting is finding the new ways of of maybe moving or um, trying to take the musicians with you or move with them new ways of communication which I think is quite quite interesting now talking of new ways of communicating you and Katie have both released albums during COVID times. Uh, Katie, your new album is called Number Eight. Jess, yours is Time. How has that been recording, releasing an album during distancing? Katie? Um, well, I, you know, everything has just felt very new. I mean, we called my record Number Eight because it's my eighth album. Um, I've been doing it since I was 18 years old. In fact, the penultimate record to this was one that I made with Bob um, who's here beside me. And uh, that was a choir-based record where I teamed up with a choir from Georgia. And um, I think when you're in, you know, making music and putting records out, um, there are many things that become quite repetitive. And so the creativity for me becomes about finding, like f keeping that inspiration alive, keeping motivation alive. Uh, and how to do that. And so you always try and find new ways of working. So that's why, you know, it was teaming up with the choir, teaming up with Bob. And then on this record, well, um, for me, it was working with lyrics, which was, this is the first record, album number eight, where the lyrics are entirely my own. But the pandemic kind of made everything else feel completely new, like the promo and the photo shoots and the, you know, uh, video making. And Jess, I know you also had the same in terms of you know, yeah, just everything feels new. So you kind of, I felt like I didn't have to work as hard to um, to find the sort of sparks of kind of um, freshness. <laughs> and what about you, Jess? Because I know you've done a lot of work online with people working remotely during lockdown. Yeah, I think it's it was, uh, we mixed the whole album online uh, remotely. And we were really lucky just to finish the recording just before the lockdown happened, uh, which I'm so grateful for now. But I think just not being able to play concerts was the strangest thing for me, because usually with an album, then you would do a tour and, and take the album around and, and kind of have the, see people's reaction and talk to them and explain about it. So kind of doing it all through streaming platforms and obviously CDs and records themselves was quite strange because you almost, find a new intimacy that is through the internet rather than through speaking to people. So I think it was, yeah, again, felt very new, but an amazing way to be able to reach people. And it just felt like such an honor to be able to, to give people music in a very difficult time because so many more people were listening to music and to hopefully give them something that could soothe or inspire or help was just a privilege. Now your album's called Time, and whilst you've all been very busy, I know that obviously 
during 2020, you have had more time at home. I know, Bob, we had a conversation about this is the most time you've spent at home in about 25 years of your professional life. What kind of things have you been doing that you found time to do that you wouldn't have done before? Me, I've, I've done a lot of composing, actually. I've found it quite a creative time um, because I felt one of the things that was the most challenging thing as a musician, and I suspect a lot of musicians felt the same. In one sense, you suddenly think, I, I, I feel in myself, I'm losing my identity. I'm not actually engaged with other people. I found that quite challenging. So I thought, I've got to do this. And so I had a very strict routine about writing and I've done quite a lot. I've also been teaching. I've been teaching two days a week at a lovely school in Newbury called Down House. And, and they have a very good uh, music department. I love doing that because I've been in contact with young people who are really eager for music. And I think, um, you know, it's so lovely to have that opportunity to give to others. I love doing that. So I've really enjoyed that. Um, and I've had some time with my family. I mean, that's been quite nice for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Casey? Uh, well, I learned how to take film photography and that was something that, you know, I needed to do for the release of a new album um, and actually the front cover of it ended up being a self-portrait that I took, you know, and it's amazing. I mean, it became quite philosophical. Um, I'd always had a strange relationship with taking photos because it was something that you kind of have to do for this job. Um, but this allowed me to appreciate, you know, capturing a moment in time, you know, and actually being very focused on everything, every detail that you capture in a frame. And, you know, so I don't know, I sort of ended up geeking out about taking photography. Um, I also became really good at driving in London because I that had to be, lot. yeah, I had to be a designated driver when we were rehearsing with my band. So, uh, yeah, I, I became quite confident at that. Fantastic. And Jess, you were telling me that you are now a, a master chef. You now have time to cook. Oh, I don't know about a master <laughs> chef. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoy cooking. My mum and dad have um, a cafe and a tea room. So I'd been, I've been around food all my life, but never actually cooked it, always just been the server, <laughs> taking it out to people. And all, like before this, it was just the quickest meal you could make or, you know, packing for a week and what snacks can you take? But here I decided to take some time with cooking and really enjoyed it, the whole process and the tasting. And it's really not good food, but it's, it's the process <laughs> that's fun. Now we're going to talk about more music in a minute, but there's something I just want to talk about our personal experiences of Christmas. Now, Jess, just as we were getting ready to film, you were telling me about your Christmases growing up in the Lake District. You have to share the story about what Christmas Day usually would be for you. <laughs> well, it was really different every year. We, we didn't really have any really set traditions, but there was one really special year where we went to Grisdale Forest, which is not far from where I'm from, and just had my dad's homemade nut roast on a barbecue in the, one of the busiest spots of Grisdale. And then the, the kind of gem spots in the Lake District that are usually hot spots for tourists are just so peaceful on Christmas Day. I don't know if I should tell everyone this because uh, they <laughs> might all go, but they're so peaceful and you can just look at the views and be surrounded by the, the stunning landscape. So that's what we would do. The Lake District Tourist Board will be proud of that little plug. <laughs> Katie, what about you? Because obviously uh, there must be Georgian traditions that you've grown up with. How do they differ from what you might find in uh, England? Well, actually for me, the difference of, uh, in Christmas in Georgia and then the UK when we moved over was vast because so I lived in Georgia and my whole family's from there. Um, we were there till 1994. So I was about nine when I moved over. And in Georgia, well, because it used to be a Soviet Union country, it got its independence in the early 90s. They didn't really do Christmas the way it's done over here in the West. So like, I remember at kindergarten, my first years of school, we'd have a white father Christmas would come and he'd bring fruit for the kids. And that was basically it. Now, when we moved over to the UK, I was nine, and suddenly, you know, my mum's friends in the UK were like, oh, you know, this is going to be first Western Christmas for Katie and, and my little brother, Zurab. And um, suddenly I had to, you know, choose a gift from Father Christmas, and I got given an Argos catalogue. And, um, and I loved it. I could pick anything out of it. It was remarkable. And, and I do remember saying to my parents, I was like, but why didn't Father Christmas come to Georgia? And they said, well, 
you know, he, he can't make it over there, but he makes it to the UK, so. <laughs> a busy guy. <laughs> Bob, your Christmases, of course, have changed because your early part of your career, you were a chorister in the Choir of Kings College, Cambridge, and then a choral scholar. And obviously the Choir of Kings is synonymous to Christmas around the world for the service of nine lessons and carols. Now, the piece of choral trivia is that you are the only person to have sung the Once and Royal solo on three separate occasions. Is that right? It is, yes. It was a very, very long time ago. Um, yeah, uh, actually Kings was a very big part of um, our family life. And, uh, you know, we've, we've listened to, to it um, well every year. So we do that. Christmas, uh, Christmas for us is, is lovely. I have five children and uh, two of my children live abroad. So I have a daughter living in Vancouver and I have a son living in Stockholm. And normally we would all get together and it's not gonna happen this year. So that will be a bit strange. Um, it'll be very quiet, but uh, I have a daughter who lives in London and her, her and her partner, they're coming to us. So it'll be very quiet, but um, so it won't be as noisy as uh, it normally is. And that's the thing. I think Christmas for everyone this year is gonna be vastly different. You're cooking on Christmas day, of course, after your- uh, I mean, Who uh, else uh, would be? <laughs> uh, and what, is it a nut roast? It's not gonna be a nut roast. I think I'd make a vegetarian lasagna. What about you, Katie? Are you London-based this Christmas? I'm going to be London-based, and I think my mum's going to be cooking. I'm spending it with mum and dad and my brother, Z. And Katie, we've got some wonderful Christmas songs from you in tonight's concert, including a Christmas classic. Yes, I'm going to be singing... Well, there's a few, actually, isn't there? There's um, uh, um, Shedrick, and I use the original Ukrainian name, um, but it's mainly known as Carol of the Bells which I think it became quite infamous when it was in the Home Alone film. Oh, that's yeah, right, that's isn't right. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, most people will recognise it, but it will sound a little bit different because it's in the original language, um, which is Ukrainian. And Ukrainian sort of sonically is quite close to Russian and a lot of Georgians speak Russian. So, you know, it's, it's slightly easier to sing. Um, now, this was a song that one of the songs that we collaborated on, on the In Winter album. And I, I would love to just tell the story of you know, the making of that record. Yeah. Um, so this was a collaboration with the Gory Women's Choir. They are a classical choir from Georgia, and Georgia has its polyphonic singing on the UNESCO World Heritage List as one of the things that must be preserved, and they really are exquisite. And this record that we collaborated on was to celebrate choral singing from the Eastern European part of the world because you have songs like Shedrick, Carol of the Bells that stem from there. Um, we also sort of varied the material and there's a beautiful classic song by Joni Mitchell called River. So we're gonna be singing that. And, um, and the arrangement is so beautiful because on the record, uh, on In Winter, it was, um, it was an all female uh, arrangement, but we've, you've got a yes, beautiful it, it, multi. Well, actually the, the uh, tradition in the, it, Eastern Europe is in the women's choirs. A lot of the uh, women sing very low, and uh, they they certainly do in the Gori choir. They 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 uh, have real tone. It's it's got a it's got a really rich, beautiful sound they make. Um, yes, I I was thinking about River because that I think that was the first one that I did for you, and I was really terrified. I thought I've got to get this right. <laughs> Well, that's, well, I was just terrified having you work with us because, you know, well, what you're capable of doing with voices is, is so extraordinary. It's so touching and, um, and it's amazing. You know, the BBC singers, I mean, they are phenomenal. But to hear, you know, your arrangement, is, it just gave me tingles yesterday listening well, to they were, perform. What I loved and, and it, you know, they're wonderful musicians, but what I loved, they were really listening to you, you know, and that, that is such a compliment to just everything that's going on, that kind of collaborative spirit. And I, it, I found that incredibly moving, actually, doing that song yesterday for that reason. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing it in the concert. I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. And Jess, in the second half, you're going to be performing a fantastic virtuosic piece for saxophone, Scaramouche. 
yes, I'm going to play the third movement, Brasileira. And it's one of those pieces full of life and, and energy. And it's been so much fun to play, actually, with, with Bob and the BBC Concert Orchestra. And it's in a new arrangement with, with just brass. So it's quite a different sound to what I'm used to, but takes me right back to when I first started playing saxophone because I started in a, a carnival street band. So that was the kind of instrumentation we had, percussion and brass and saxophones. And it kind of makes me feel as though I've come full circle and it's such a joy to play. And you're also playing in a couple of pieces that Bob has written. And I know in the first half, we heard the midnight of your birth, which equally, I would say that the two experiences of hearing the singers working with you and with Katie yesterday, it just felt like the mutual respect in the room, this beautiful music making. I think it works so well. And that's a reworking of your original carol, isn't it, with saxophone, Bob? Yes. I mean, it, we done it with the BBC singers before. I think we did it last time when we came to the Barbican, when we sang in the Barbican two years with it, because I wrote it for the Cleveland Orchestra Children's Chorus with the Cleveland Orchestra, which is a kind of, again, that was such a thrill to be able to do that. So we did it with the BBC Concert Orchestra, the full orchestra, and we're doing it with piano and with jazz tonight. And so that's a thrill for me. Um, so it, it has a soprano saxophone part. And I think I said to Jess yesterday, I think, uh, now I've heard that, I don't want to hear the other version. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very special piece. By total chance, it came on just after my daughter was born. So it was the first piece of music she ever heard as the midnight of your birth, which seemed appropriate, so it's very special. So you now, can blame me, Johnny. I, well, I do indeed. Her, her musical tastes are, are forged by Bob Chilcott. <laughs> There's about six minutes before we go back into the main hall for tonight's concert. So I just wanted to ask you about what music you like listening to at Christmas, if there's any kind of particular genre or album that's particularly important to you. What about you, Jess? Oh, um, well, I love Darling Love at Christmas, but there's one song by Ella Fitzgerald, The Secret of Christmas, which is just the most moving, stunning, piece of artistry ever it's it's so special it's like a little gem and to me that is Christmas in three minutes it's her voice the arrangement it's like almost like a James Bond song but so subtle I would say it's got to be that song the yeah. glory of Ella what about you Katie I actually adore yeah the music I discovered from this record that we made so for example Rachmaninoff's The Vespers I think are exquisite, a lot of the Romanian carols, some of the Ukrainian carols. So yeah, I like to dive in into that world. I love the Rachmaninoff Vespers, it's the low, the low ba bass part, which you can hear the BBC singers singing in 2021, by the way, there we are, nice little plug. <laughs> what about you, Bob? Well, uh, actually I have to say, Katie, your album features very heavily at Christmas in, because it's so peaceful. It's, it's a beautiful album. But funnily enough, um, I also I have a little recording made by a children's choir from Opava in the Czech Republic. Then they sing all these traditional um, Czech carols in, in the original, obviously in Czech. And just these melodies, I mean, the, the melodies from East, Central and Eastern Europe for, for the Christmas music, which we listen to a lot of those, I think, when, look, uh, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. And so many of them have been transferred into the kind of modern Christian, Western kind of tradition of carols. And yeah, I love them. We'll finish now by just talking very briefly about our own Christmases and any tips you have for people at Christmas at home. Mine is I found um, I was <laughs> I found a cookbook when I was trying to find a perfect recipe for a Christmas pudding. And Fanny Craddock, who was a TV chef in this country in the 1960s and 70s, uh, had a recipe for uh, for mince pies, and next to it, as an alternative, was a recipe for a mincemeat omelette, which sounds disgusting, I grant you, but I tried it. And you, uh, you beat the eggs and add butter, and then when it's in the pan, you add mincemeat in, fold it over, and then just before you serve it, you add um, icing sugar over the top of the omelette, which sounds terrible. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's the perfect cure, maybe, if the night before there was slightly too much sherry on the menu. <laughs> But have you got a Christmas tip for the viewers, Jess? Christmas tip? No, I don't think I do. Walk, walk the food off. Walk, walk the food, the food off. off. Yeah. I, my mum's mince pie. Just buy my mum's mince pie. Really? <laughs> what about you, Katie? I, to me, it's just about taking it easy. I think letting go of all that kind of, you know, the pressures of Christmas. 
And I think this year, hopefully, we'll all allow ourselves to do that. <laughs> Bob. Yeah, I'm with you on that, actually. That's very good advice, I think. My, my wife, Kate, um, spent a lot of her um, younger life in Glasgow. And um, Clootie Dumpling was the, was the uh, kind of version of Christmas pudding. She always makes a Clootie Dumpling. Fantastic. And what is in that? It's a kind of it's it's a it's a suet pudding that's that's uh, full of fruit and it's it's absolutely delicious. You make it like a Christmas pudding, but it's much it's much lighter. And a lot of Scots, Scots they they also they um, they fry it the next morning for breakfast. <laughs> it's really good. So we're about to go back into the hall for the second half of tonight's live concert, but we all feel how important it has been to stay connected to our audiences this year and how vital streaming has been. It really has and I'm grateful to, to everybody who's spent time with us you know it's it's of course a real treat to watch a concert online but also it's it's a real investment and uh, I'm so grateful to audiences who have dedicated their time supported artists and really really helped keep the magic of music alive. And of course, Katie, that's not going to stop, is it? Even when things go back to the, to the old way of all being in a concert hall, we're still going to probably be streaming and connecting in different ways to our audiences. Yeah, I hope so. And, and you know what? This situation, I have definitely seen, you know, in other areas, people are putting more into the types of productions that are being put on, you know, because things are being filmed, you're getting to see close-ups of musicians, you know, how they play. Um, and so it is much more intimate. So yeah, I, I really hope it does continue. Thank you, Casey. Well, we're out of time here, but we're now going to head back into the Barbican Hall for the second half of tonight's live concert with the BBC Singers, conducted by Bob Chilcott. Welcome back to the Barbican for this festive celebratory concert. I'm Jess Gillam and I'm delighted to be here tonight with the BBC Singers for their Christmas concert with members of the BBC Concert Orchestra, special guest Katie Melua and the King of Christmas, Bob Chilcott. There's still plenty of wintry music to come tonight to help fire up your festive spirit, hopefully. Shortly, the ladies of the BBC Singers are going to sing a beautiful song by the 20th century English composer Elizabeth Poston. It's a little-known carol she wrote, set in a 16th century text called Ballula Low. First, though, players from the BBC Concert Orchestra perform Roger Harvey's Christmas medley for brass called Festive Cheer. Please welcome back to the stage the principal guest conductor of the BBC Singers, Bob Chilcott.
That was Elizabeth Poston's beautiful carol, Valula Law, sung there by the BBC Singers with Bob Chilcott. In a minute, I'm going to join the players from the BBC Concert Orchestra to perform Brasileira from Mio's Scaramouche. And this is a piece I love to play because I actually first started playing saxophone when I was seven in 
a Brazilian samba carnival band. And the instrumentation was really similar to this. It was brass, saxophones and percussion. And at Christmas, we'd just play on the, the streets in various Christmas parades. So it's a bit, bit like that again, but not on the street. Uh, but before that, um, I'm going to join the BBC singers and Ashok Gupta to perform another beautiful carol by Bob Chilcott. This is The Shepherds Sing with the soloist Emma Tring.
was Brasiliera by Darius Mio, arranged especially for tonight's concert by George Morton, and huge thanks to the BBC Concert Orchestra and to you, Bob. Well, I think we need to call on our audience again for some COVID safe, live, restriction safe humming. Is that right? We do. We do. Um, actually, uh, when, you, when you hummed in the first half, it was really uh, rather an overwhelming experience, I have to say that. It was very gentle and lovely, but um, it's rather special to hear that, so thank you. you. In this one, you can have a go at Silent Night. It, it's actually combined with a different text. It's Sweet was the song the Virgin sang, a uh, completely different melody, but Silent Night comes in towards the end. It's in C major, so it goes up to a top F. So if you want to, you know, just vary the pitch. Uh, if, you, if you so wish, you're absolutely welcome. But we'd love you to join us um, with a bit of safe humming. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. So we'll hear Sweet Was the Song and Silent Night by Bob Chilcott. And then while you recover, and maybe as well at home if you're humming along, and get your breath back, the BBC singers will sing Mac Wilberg's classic arrangement of Jingle Bells.
the ground is white. Go it while you're young. Take the girls tonight and sing this same song. Just head up up the bay to 40 for his speed. Then push him to an open stage. It's not Christmas now. When is it going to be Christmas? I said that to Rosie backstage and she said on the 25th, so there you go. Um, next tonight, it's time to welcome back our very special guest for the evening for another set of beautiful, festive and winter songs. Please give a warm welcome back to Katie Melua. And 
Oh, thank you, Katie. That's such a great song. And of course, everyone knows that song. It's gorgeous. Um, you, you sing songs by all sorts of people. In fact, you're going to sing um, a, a, a White Christmas for us third, uh, third up, which is a lovely surprise for us. And actually, then you also write a lot of your own material, so you do both. And um, just say a little bit about your, the, the second month. Maybe I dreamt it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a delight to be singing songs by some of the greatest composers and writers um, and also having the opportunity to write your own. Um, and this next song is called Maybe I Dreamt It. Uh, it was inspired by the German choreographer Pina Bausch. And I'm very proud to say that the lyrics are my own, um, but the music to this song are by my brother Zurab Melua. Ah. Zurab is over there. Well... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're keeping it quiet. <laughs> feel 
Well, after those gorgeous songs from Katie, the BBC singers are going to treat us to a beautiful song, especially suited to the year we all find ourselves in, 2020, where we're all getting used to celebrating in slightly different ways. We're going to hear Alison Carver's song, Thinking of You This Christmas, in a magical arrangement by Peter Foggett. And I'm delighted to say that Alison is here with us in the hall tonight, so welcome, Alison. We'll then hear the wartime classic by Hugh Martin and Ralph Blaine, made famous, of course, by Judy Garland in the musical Meet Me in St. Louis. It's Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, also incorporating the carol Deck the Hall, because it seems that you can't have enough Christmas. But before that, another classic with a different theme altogether. It's Bob Chilcott's arrangement of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Thank you. 
performed here at the Barbican by the wonderful BBC Singers. <laughs> Joined by members of the BBC Concert Orchestra. <laughs> with pianist Ashok Gupta and organist Rachel Mahon. <laughs> and the principal guest conductor of the BBC Singers, Bob Chilcott. I'm Jess Gillum, and as we reach the end of our concert tonight, a huge thank you to our live audience here in the hall and to our, all of our audience around the world at home. We'd like to say a huge thank you to the production team at the Barbican who've worked tirelessly to make this possible. the BBC outside broadcasting team who have made it possible to share it with you around the world. We really appreciate you spending this time with us and I think I can speak on behalf of all the musicians on stage to say that it's such a special feeling to be part of the magic of sharing music again. It's been a very, very difficult year for everybody but I think music has the power to bring us together, to, to unite and to bring some joy. So I hope you enjoy the last piece in our concert this evening, which is David Wilcox's arrangement of O Come All Ye Faithful. From me, from the BBC Singers, from Bob, the BBC Concert Orchestra and Katie Melua, have a wonderful festive season and here's to a happy, healthy 2021 where we can all be together again. Merry Christmas. <laughs>
Thank you.